have embarked on a dangerous journey. In the world of the microcosm, we encounter nature's construction modules in the form of atoms, molecules, viruses, and bacteria. It is not a peaceful world. We also encounter active substances in the microcosm, which even in minute quantities, injure, make sick, and kill. They threaten us, for instance, in the form of weapons that are available throughout the world for the mass destruction of people. These materials, however, are also in the hands of terrorist or criminal organizations that spread death, fear, and panic. Many of these substances are used economically and could cause devastating disasters through accidents or human error. It is impossible to provide 100% safety control over the microcosm. Sooner or later, further incidents will occur as in the past. The Swiss Armed Forces are prepared to face the threat of biological and chemical agents and possible incidents. These include not only acts of war, what are known as NBC agents could be used by terrorists without warning in a civilian environment. Accidents or sabotage could lead to their release with often disastrous results. Natural catastrophes or revolts enhance the likelihood of such incidents. Natural sources cause epidemics among humans and animals. The members of the Swiss Armed Forces are trained and equipped to be deployed after an NBC event. We will be capable of acting, maintaining order, protecting people and saving lives when such a day comes. Released radioactivity can destroy life in contaminated areas or have long-term effects such as cancer over decades. One day, we may perhaps be engaged in operations somewhere in Switzerland on the outskirts of a radioactively contaminated area. We have been tasked to secure the threatened area. Decimeter checks prevent us from being exposed to too much radiation. Our protective measures have been commanded by the NBC specialists in accordance with the situation. We present three possible threat scenarios that constitute a risk to Switzerland. At many locations in Switzerland, people work with radioactive substances, for example in medicine, in industry or research. Through an accident by theft or due to human error, these substances could be released and threaten humans and environment already in minute quantities. The town of Joania, with about a million inhabitants, is a regional center of Brazil. A picture from 1987 shows the ruins of a building that once was the municipal hospital. Here, scrap metal dealers recently stole an obsolete device used for irradiating patients in order to sell its metal parts. 
When dismantling it, they also opened the radiation source of the appliance, a container with radioactive cesium. The powder which fluoresced in blue in the dark fascinated the thieves. They passed it on to their relatives and acquaintances. The details of the catastrophe were discovered only two weeks later. In the meantime, numerous people absorbed large radiation dosages. Four people died from the effects of severe radiation. Many others suffer from skin burns. Over the following days, measurements were made on more than 110,000 inhabitants and several hundred contaminated persons were identified. The poisonous substance had been disseminated over several residential areas. Inhabitants were evacuated and numerous buildings had to be demolished. The topsoil was removed from the gardens and public parks affected. Even today, after two decades, elevated radiation levels can be detected in the region. The decimeters of the passengers of a patrol vehicle are checked. Perhaps our service along the perimeter of a contaminated area also has a terrorist background. As with ample sources all over the world, the dissemination of radioactive substances by terrorists or criminals is possible at any time. In 1995, the Moscow security forces discovered a bomb in a park close to the Kremlin. It was crammed full with radioactive substances. It was the first example of what is known as a dirty bomb built by terrorists. A dirty bomb can be constructed with little effort and without special expertise. Respective instructions can even be found in the internet. 10 pounds of ordinary explosives mixed with a handful of cesium are sufficient ingredients for making such a bomb. It causes no nuclear explosion and only a few people would be directly killed by its detonation. The real terror would begin only later. A few minutes after the detonation, a cloud with radioactive substances would form. The low radiation level would not cause any immediate damage, but form a lingering threat. The high energy gamma radiation damages human cells and may trigger cancer, for instance. The cancer rate could rise in the region affected unless thorough and expensive decontamination measures would be carried out. It is conceivable that our population and members of our armed forces will also be faced with a criminal dissemination of radioactive material someday. The Swiss armed forces would be deployed for evacuating people, for law enforcement and for decontaminating persons and infrastructure. No one can exclude the possibility that a disturbance could arise in a nuclear power station in Switzerland or abroad during transport of highly radioactive material or in a depot for radioactive waste. On the 26th of April 1986, the fourth reactor block in the Ukraine nuclear power station in Chernobyl was completely destroyed by an explosion. Winds spread the radioactive substances all across Europe. Increased levels of radioactivity were measured all over the Northern Hemisphere. The rescue forces at the site of the nuclear power station were exposed to severe, partially lethal radiation dosages. Many died shortly later from the effects of acute radiation sickness. The radioactive contamination of the environment put millions of lives at risk. The soils were contaminated. Radioactive substances were detected later in foodstuffs. Hundreds of thousands of people affected had to be resettled. Many others remained in areas with elevated radiation rates. Even 20 years after the accident, parts of the population are still struggling with health problems. 
consequences have been drawn from the Chernobyl catastrophe and from other accidents to improve the technical safety of installations. Nuclear power stations in Switzerland were also technically upgraded. Although this has reduced the risk, the number of nuclear power stations throughout the world is steadily growing. In the event of a nuclear power station accident in Switzerland or the immediate abroad, Swiss forces would have to be called up to provide security and to maintain law and order. They would be primarily deployed to the perimeter of the contaminated area. The maximum acceptable radiation dosages for rescue operations have been defined by law and would be monitored on all missions. Du bist ja jetzt dann fertig mit dem Mili da. Was machst du noch? Ich weiß auch noch nicht genau. Ich denke, ich muss wieder auf arbeiten, wenn es geht. Und äh, wieder ein bisschen Geld verdienen. Dass wieder ein bisschen zurück ins Leben kommen. Nuclear weapons continue to pose a threat to humanity. What they are capable of inflicting on unprepared civilians or unprepared forces became evident towards the end of the Second World War. At the order of President Harry Truman, American bombers dropped the only nuclear weapons ever deployed in wartime on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on the 6th, respectively the 9th of August 1945. It was an all-time low in the human history of war. The explosions killed 155,000 people instantly. 110,000 victims died after a few weeks from acute radiation sickness. A further 100,000 died from the long-term effects in the following years and decades. After the end of what is known as the Cold War, nobody in Europe reckons with a deliberate nuclear strike anymore. But at the same time, the likelihood of nuclear weapons being used in a regional conflict has increased. Switzerland too would be affected by the long-distance effects of such incidents. Nobody can exclude the possibility of Central Europe suffering an isolated hit by a long-distance nuclear missile of a regional warring party. As host country for many international organizations and events, Switzerland could, for instance, become the focus of such an attack. So there are various reasons why we could imagine military personnel being deployed one day to operations somewhere in Switzerland, in the vicinity of a radioactively contaminated area. The nuclear and radiological threat and danger is a reality for Switzerland, even in times of peace. We will belong to those who are sufficiently protected, thanks to monitoring and alert means, as well as situation-adequate NBC protection. We will therefore be able to take action and assist. The population will need our help. We are preparing ourselves for such missions so that we can protect ourselves, the forces and the population against the invisible death and save lives. For us, it has not been a problem because we are very prepared to gérer this kind of situation.
We have embarked on a dangerous journey. In the world of the microcosm, we encounter nature's construction modules in the form of atoms, molecules, viruses, and bacteria. It is not a peaceful world. We also encounter active substances in the microcosm, which even in minute quantities, injure, make sick, and kill. They threaten us, for instance, in the form of weapons that are available throughout the world for the mass destruction of people. These materials, however, are also in the hands of terrorist or criminal organizations that spread death, fear, and panic. Many of these substances are used economically and could cause devastating disasters through accidents or human error. It is impossible to provide 100% safety control over the microcosm. Sooner or later, further incidents will occur as in the past. The Swiss Armed Forces are prepared to face the threat of biological and chemical agents and possible incidents. These include not only acts of war, what are known as NBC agents could be used by terrorists without warning in a civilian environment. Accidents or sabotage could lead to their release with often disastrous results. Natural catastrophes or revolts enhance the likelihood of such incidents. Natural sources cause epidemics among humans and animals. The members of the Swiss Armed Forces are trained and equipped to be deployed after an NBC event. We will be capable of acting, maintaining order, protecting people and saving lives when such a day comes. Viruses and bacteria can be lethal germs for humans and animals. If they get out of hand, every one of us is at risk. One day we could be on duty somewhere in Switzerland after an epidemic has become rampant among humans or animals. Our tasks would include enforcing quarantine measures. Vehicles and persons would be checked if they wish to enter or leave the restricted area. We will present three possible biological threat scenarios. Naturally occurring germs currently form the greatest biological danger for the population. They may cause a regional epidemic or a worldwide pandemic with lethal consequences for those affected. In November 2002, a yet unknown pulmonary disease emerged and became known under the designation of SARS. Coronaviruses are considered to be the cause of the disease that occur frequently in birds and mammals. The first cases were reported from China. Travelers spread the disease to other Asian countries. There is no effective antidote. The 192 member states of the World Health Organization, WHO, including Switzerland, coordinated their countermeasures. These included locally prescribed quarantines and medical checkups for international travelers. The measures proved to be effective. In July 2003, the WHO declared worldwide containment of the disease. Up to this point, more than 8,000 persons had been infected with the germ. 
In 812 cases, the disease was fatal. SARS is considered to be the first new infectious disease of the 21st century. In 1997, a yet unknown virus discovered in Hong Kong in hens and waterfowl became known as the cause for avian flu. After all poultry in the region had been slaughtered, it was thought to have been eliminated but reappeared in the middle of December 2003 in South Korea. It spread across vast areas of East Asia and reached the Western world in 2005. The first cases emerged in Eastern Europe in October. The animal plague also threatened humans. 146 cases became known where the virus was transferred from animal to human beings. The disease is lethal for half of those infected. People fear that a mutant virus could enable the interhuman transfer of the virus. In such a case, a deadly pandemic could result. Globally coordinated preventive measures, however, have proved to be effective up to now. The so-called Spanish flu is a historical example for a pandemic. In the years from 1918 to 1920, it caused approximately 25 million deaths, more than twice the number of casualties in the First World War. Someday, our engagement may also be necessary because of criminal or terrorist activities. Microorganisms have been disseminated intentionally already in the past. In the autumn of 2001, several letters with a fine dry powder were sent to newspaper editorial offices and American senators. The powder contained durable anthrax germs in the form of viable bacterial spores. 22 people were infected with anthrax, including post office staff who had only passed on the envelopes without opening them. Five died from pulmonary anthrax. The message contained in the letter was, you cannot stop us. We have anthrax. You will die now. Are you scared? Death to America. Death to Israel. Allah is great. Even in Switzerland, the incident caused a wave of more than 1,000 suspected anthrax cases and interventions of the police, the fire brigade, the cantonal health and federal authorities. For the first time, our country had to face a bioterrorist threat. If, for example, a few kilograms of pure anthrax spores were disseminated, then extensive cordoning off and guard measures would be necessary over an area corresponding to that of a medium town. Our troops have been prepared for such operations. These measures would also be necessary if, for example, a suspicious postal consignment were discovered one day in a company office or our armed forces. Hey, what's this? The anthrax attacks in 2001 and their ensuing effects throughout the world 
have drastically demonstrated the great destructive potential of bioterrorism. Biological weapons serve to intentionally spread germs or biotoxins for warfare or terrorist purposes. These means of mass destruction, though banned by international law, still continue to be a threat. Among the diseases suitable for biological attacks, smallpox have a special status. They are very easily transferred from one person to another. Since the abolition of compulsory vaccination, we are largely unprotected. Smallpox are considered extinct throughout the world, and officially smallpox viruses are only stored in two laboratories for scientific purposes, in the USA and in Russia. In the Soviet Union, smallpox viruses were produced for biological warfare until the 1990s. These and other highly contagious biological agents cause health experts great concern. It cannot be excluded that these agents are also in the hands of terrorists or aggressor states. Globally, there are not enough vaccination doses to go around. This is why scientists reckon in extremis with millions of casualties if such a deliberate attack were carried out. NBC NCOs have a biological detection kit with which, in suspicious cases, they are able to test for anthrax and other biological agents. The biological protection measures are continually adapted to current technical developments and threats. There possibly are still a few states that foster the development of biological weapons. Genetic engineering and bioreactor production methods for organisms have provided new prospectus for mass destruction through biological weapons. One day we may be on duty somewhere in Switzerland because of a biological threat. The natural occurrence of pathogens in the form of an epidemic or pandemic is currently the greatest threat to the population. But germs and biotoxins in the hands of terrorists can also be a means to spread death, fear and panic. Despite the Biological Weapons Convention, the use of pathogens as weapons in war cannot be excluded. We belong to those who are sufficiently protected thanks to monitoring and alert means, as well as situation-adequate NBC protection, if we consistently observe the protection measures ordered. We are preparing ourselves for such missions so that we can maintain order, protect ourselves and the population, and possibly save lives. have embarked on a dangerous journey. In the world of the microcosm, we encounter nature's construction modules in the form of atoms, molecules, viruses, and bacteria. It is not a peaceful world. We also encounter active substances in the microcosm, which even in minute quantities, injure, make sick, and kill. They threaten us, for instance, in the form of weapons that are available throughout the world for the mass destruction of people. These materials, however, are also in the hands of terrorist or criminal organizations that spread death, fear and panic. Many of these substances are used economically and could cause devastating disasters through accidents or human error. 
it is impossible to provide 100% safety control over the microcosm. Sooner or later, further incidents will occur, as in the past. The Swiss Armed Forces are prepared to face the threat of biological and chemical agents and possible incidents. These include not only acts of war, what are known as NBC agents could be used by terrorists without warning in a civilian environment. Accidents or sabotage could lead to their release with often disastrous results. Natural catastrophes or revolts enhance the likelihood of such incidents. Natural sources cause epidemics among humans and animals. The members of the Swiss Armed Forces are trained and equipped to be deployed after an NBC event. We will be capable of acting, maintaining order, protecting people and saving lives when such a day comes. A patrol and an observation post carry out their guard duty. Even in peacetime, chemical sabotage may threaten persons, accommodation and the equipment of our forces. We will present three possible chemical threat scenarios that form a risk for Switzerland. One of these threats is chemical terrorism. Twentieth of March, 1995, a Monday morning in Tokyo. At rush hour, plastic bags containing sarin, packed in newspaper, were placed in the commuter trains of three underground rail connections. Sarin is a nerve toxin. Its initial effects are distorted vision, running nose, coughing, perspiration, feeling sick and diarrhea. Seriously affected persons finally die to respiratory standstill and cardiac arrest. Immediately prior to disembarking, the perpetrators punched holes in the plastic containers with umbrellas in order to release the sarin. The escaping sarin spread throughout each respective carriage of five underground trains. Poisoned victims disembarked from the trains at a total of 15 underground stations. The first emergency calls were received by the security authorities after 8 o'clock local time. Nine persons died shortly after the attack. A further victim passed away on the same day, another two after a few weeks. 5,000 people were affected and sought a doctor or needed hospital care. About a thousand were considerably or severely poisoned. Many were permanently injured or mentally traumatized. One of many religious sects of the country was behind the attack. Its members consider the world to be corrupt and evil, which is why it has to be fought against. Murder is believed to bring both victim and culprit closer to enlightenment. 
Years after the attack, 12 members of the radical sect were sentenced to death. Incidents like the sarin attacks in Tokyo are also conceivable in Switzerland at any time and without comfortable prior warning. Accidents in chemical industries cannot be ruled out. Although high safety standards apply in stationary installations in Switzerland, the transport of chemical substances continues to be particularly risky. In March 1994, five tank wagons of a derailed goods train exploded in Zurich Affolten. Three residential buildings were totally destroyed. Several people were injured and residents were evacuated. Explosive fumes in the sewage system posed a further problem. In the past, exploding tank wagons have caused much greater catastrophes in France, the USA and Mexico. The greatest disaster of the chemical industry to date occurred on the 3rd of December 1984 in the Indian town of Bhopal. A tank exploded in the factory of an American major concern and released some 40 tons of a highly toxic substance into the air. The cloud of poisonous fumes drifted close to the ground towards a residential area. 8,000 people lost their lives within the first three days. To date, more than 20,000 people have died from the direct and indirect effects of the disaster. Even today, 500,000 people from the first, second and third generation still suffer from long-term effects. The experience humans have made with chemical warfare is dreadful. In the First World War, tens of thousands of soldiers suffered excruciating deaths from lethal toxic substances, such as the lung-damaging warfare agent Fesgen or the blister agent mustard gas. Already then, there were initiatives for a worldwide ban and prohibition of chemical weapons. On the 25th of August, 1988, the Iraq dictator Saddam Hussein attacked a small Kurdish town with chemical weapons. According to various estimates, up to 5,000 unprotected people suffered a painful death. Most of them women, children and elderly men. Thousands were so badly poisoned that they died later or suffered lasting damage to their health. The massacre was discovered merely by chance by Western journalists and scientists who documented the results of the attack briefly after the bombardment. Yeah. 
Qu'est-ce qui se passe ici Crowley In 1997, the Chemical Weapons Convention entered into force, which prohibits the use and the production of chemical weapons. It was signed by 181 states. All chemical weapons were to be destroyed by 2007. But this goal has not been reached. It is even suspected that single states have produced and stockpiled new chemical agents. Today, 20 to 30 countries still possess sea weapons. 90 to 100,000 tons of chemical warfare agents are contained in ammunition or are stockpiled in canisters or tanks, including nerve, blister and lung damaging agents, cytotoxins, irritants or psychological agents. Gut, wir müssen jetzt sofort das Gebiet füllen und den Filter wechseln. exclude that one day military personnel somewhere in Switzerland may be affected by a chemical incident. Not only chemical agents are relevant for military operations. Terrorists might be tempted to prevent military operations through chemical attacks or sabotage. Chemical disasters or environmental catastrophes can make it necessary to call up forces. The chemical weapon remains a threat during peace support operations abroad. We will belong to those who are able to act and help. Whether the entire country is affected or merely a region makes no difference to us. We are preparing ourselves for such missions so that we can maintain order, protect ourselves and the population and possibly save lives.